check, check. I can switch to that mic if you prefer. <clears throat> Test it. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Hello? Okay. I think we're, I think we're, Randy got it. Upper lip, okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right, you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and get started then. So uh, my name is Brendan Donahue. Um, I guess I'm probably most recently well-known for um, doing most of the uh, FPGA design work in Cocoa BGA. Um, one thing that's, that's caught my eye kind of recently is um, uh, the old MC-10. Um, growing up, I had a, a couple friends who had them, and uh, they were, they were kind of cool, kind of cute. But you know, now that there are things like the MCX-128 that gives you 128K RAM and things like um, the uh, MCX-32SD that actually gives you, you know, a pseudo uh, floppy hard drive, uh, it, it, um, it, it kind of you know, strikes me as, as kind of a little bit more interesting machine, a little more usable. So anyway, um, so I'll be talking about the, uh, the MC-10. Um, and, uh, um, and, and specifically with a, with a stilt towards the things that I'm kind of interested in, which is, you know, kind of around Cocoa BGA. <clears throat> talk louder or bring the mic closer to me. Okay. Um, so, uh, just to provide some acknowledgements, you know, this, this information is, you know, this, this presentation and what I've been doing recently uh, wouldn't have been possible without, you know, some of the other uh, MC10 giants out there, um, Darren Atkinson, Simon Jonasson, John Linville in particular. Um, and then I also want to thank uh, Jim Brain for the idea for the, you know, the bad pun in the, uh, in the uh, title. Uh, I'll accept blame for the rest of the puns and idioms. Okay, so... A lot of you guys already know this, I imagine. So let's let's back up a little bit and and talk about you know how video is drawn on a on a TV screen or monitor. Audio is cutting out. Okay. Um, okay. Check, check. Is that better? Oh, hello? hello? Okay. It seems like I kind of come and go still. When you turn your head to your left, it's still loud. Okay. I'll try not to turn my head. <laughs> try just to turn my body. <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, this is, you know, a typical uh, diagram demonstrating uh, raster scan and, and vertical retrace. Um, so, you know, it's very common when you're painting a picture on a computer screen or any old CRT from the day, right? You start at the top left corner, you stream your electron beam to the, to the right and, you know, draw your, draw your pixels on the screen. And then there's a, a region where, you know, you, you fly back to the left and start again, right? And you, and you keep doing that. And, and the times that are shown here where you're going back um, are not drawn, right? They're dotted lines. They're, they're considered blanking regions, right? So you have a, a horizontal blanking region where you're, you're going from the, the right to the left to, for, for the next swipe. And then at the bottom, when you reach this bottom corner, you've got a blanking region where you're going from bottom right corner to top left corner. So, you know, no, no surprise, a lot of you guys already know this stuff. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so this is a, um, a pinout of the uh, 6847 VDG. So it's uh, you know, common to the COCO 1 and 2 and to the MC-10, as well as a couple other systems. You know, certainly it's in the Dragon. Uh, it's also in um, oh, like, the, like the VZ-200. There's a handful of other systems that have them as well. Uh, anyway, so the signaling that we just talked about up there around horizontal and vertical sync uh, actually is triggered on these pins, they show up, and you can, I don't know if you can make it out here, HS has a, a bar over the top of it, FS has a bar over the top of it. So HS is horizontal sync when it's, um, it has a bar over it because it's asserted low. 
So when it's low, then you know you're in the blanking region. Um, and it so happens that on the, uh, on the cocoa, um, well, and, sorry, an, an FS is frame or field sink. So that's the, the same as vertical sink in this situation. So that guy is, um, on the cocoa, is tied to an interrupt pin on the 6809. So, um, uh, anyway, so um, I think that's all I wanted to say there. I think most of the rest of the text kind of speaks for itself in terms of, you know, uh, the rates and, and things like that. Um, okay, so here we go. So here's a comparison of the two schematics. So you can see on the, on the COCO, the field sync pin is, well, connected to something. I'm not drawing where the CPU is, but take my word for it, it's connected to the CPU. Uh, on the MC10 schematic, you can see field sync is just floating. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, so you'll say, well, why do we care? Who cares about this, this you know, stupid pin? Well, there's, there's a couple of different reasons. One, um, it enables software to do things during the blanking region, you know, like perform video memory updates, um, uh, you know, things like that to avoid tearing. Uh, secondly, it provides a, you know, a 60 hertz for NTSC a periodic interrupt, uh, 50 hertz for, for PAL guys out there, um, so that you can, you know, trigger these events regularly, right? And then last but not least, and my, <laughs> where I'm most interested is, you know, the way Coco VGA works is um, it, um, it of course knows when it's in the blanking region, and that's how, uh, that's how software communicates with Coco VGA to get to its enhanced features. So during the blanking region, if you drive a combo lock sequence into the, you know, the CSS and um, AG and, um, I'm trying to remember the other pin. Anyway, there's five pins. You drive a combo lock sequence into it, and then that basically tells Coco VGA the next video frame is not video. It's actually register settings or a character set to upload or whatever. And, uh, and it lets you get to you know, some of these extra features. So, you know, so my goal here was more around, well, how can I get the MC10? How can I get to you know, the Coco VGA enhanced features on the MC10 when I don't know when I'm in the blanking region? So that was, that's why I'm investigating this. So, well, don't give up hope, right? It turns out that the 6803, right, which is the main processor in the MC10, has a built-in timer. Well, yeah, can we, can we uh, you know, train it to pretend to be, a, I don't know, a V-Sync surrogate, for example? Well, it can. So there's actually demonstrations, two demonstrations I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, there's John Linville's uh, Xmas Rush for the MC10. So, okay, so kind of the, the high level, what we're trying to do is train the 6003 timer to, you know, to, to pretend to be VSync using help from the user. And then we're going to use the, the train timer to, you know, access some of these features that we had just talked about, right? Synch uh, synchronizing to Coco VGA combo locks, um, switching back and forth between, you know, register set and, and, and video, and kind of in general being able to update video memory without uh, tearing. This is a general software feature. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, um, you know, how, how we might do this. So we kind of have to think about if we were going to make the, uh, the timer in the 6803 mimic VSync, well, let, let's, we need to understand how, how long it takes to do a video frame. So, um, uh, so anyway, it's 50, 57 CPU clock cycles per video scan line and 262 scan lines per frame. Not all of them are visible. Um, and then that gives you a total of uh, 14,934 timer ticks per frame. So um, that's the number of CPU cycles. So uh, thanks uh, to Simon Jonason. I was trying to figure this out from the, uh, from the, uh, 68, uh, the uh, 6847 spec and the uh, 6803 spec, and I was not coming up with this number, so when it didn't work, he, he rescued me. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the timer. So the timer, um, 
is uh, you know, a 16-bit free running timer, right? So meaning it counts up to 65, 536, and then rolls over. Um, so it's a, it's a you know, two bytes. It's at you know, um, addresses, bytes, offsets 9 and A. Uh, output comparison value, um, which means the value we want to trigger the interrupt at when it hits it is in BC. And then um, you can actually you know, tell it, well, we want, when the output compare match happens, we want to keep, we, we want to cause the, the uh, interrupt to trigger. So the, um, basically the idea is that every time you get an interrupt triggered in your interrupt service routine, you add this magic number to it, and then you can keep your timer synchronized to what vSync would be. So here's a, a little bit of a graphical example. Apologize for the, the time chart, uh, eye chart. So the idea is that um, you know the timer is just the dot 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 in front of behind of these is basically saying this 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 time is just marching on. This counter just keeps going. Um, so and this is our our output compare. Uh, so we originally have it set to zero. We take an interrupt. You know this this zero is a little bit arbitrary. I'm just starting at time zero because it makes life easy for this the purpose of this demonstration. But uh, we take our interrupt. Um, the ISR triggers, it adds 14,934 to the existing output compare value and comes up with uh, 0 plus 14,934 is 14,934. We trigger again here. The ISR adds another 14,934 to it. Then we trigger there and so on. So that's uh, just a timeline. And then you can see the idea is 16.67 you know, milliseconds is our um, 60 hertz uh, frame rate. Okay, so we, we've matched it, right? So, so that was kind of the easy part. Now we need to actually align it, right? How do we know when the blanking region is? We know we're, we're matching the frequency, but yeah, so, so anyway, um, the idea here that, um, that, that John and, and Darren demonstrated in their software was that you can use the color set select, right? That's the, the pin on the VDG that changes between the the green video and the orange video, right? And so you can use that to sort of make the display orange in a, a small segment of the display. And then let's see if we can make the, allow the user to move it around and get it off screen, for example. So, um, so I, I experimented with this and I found 96 was a good arbitrary value. Um, and then once, once you get your orange all the way off the screen, well, now you've adjusted your, your 6803 timer to, to match up. It's not only running at the right frequency, but it's in phase. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, so again, time is marching on here. Um, so just like before, right, we take the, the timer output compare interrupt. We add 14934 to zero, okay, great. Well, this next time around, <clears throat> we take this interrupt, but the user happens to be holding down the up arrow key. And so we say, oh, okay, well, we're going to add 14,934, uh, but we're going to subtract 96. So we get a little bit smaller number than we did last time. And then, oh, the, the, the user just barely pressed it um, for about 32 milliseconds, and so they got a second up arrow. And so, again, we add 14,934 uh, and subtract, 30, uh, subtract 96 to get this guy. So by doing this, you can see that you know, instead of 16.67, well, for a couple of frames there, we got 16.56. So we're, we're, for short periods of time when the keyboard's being, the keys are being held down, you're, you're temporarily making the, um, the timer shorter than the video frame uh, such that it will roll one way or the other off the screen. <clears throat> okay, so now, the, um, now it's, it's all synchronized. So now we have the ability to program the Coco VGA combo lock. We can provide those register settings like I was talking about during the next video frame. And then we also know when that's done so that we can revert the video back away from the register settings and all the other garbage that's on the screen and back to something the user actually wants to see. <clears throat> so here's a timeline view of, of that same sort of thing. So here we are, we're marching along, life is good, um, take our, our talk interrupt, okay, we come here and our next talk interrupt, we've, we've decided over here that we, we're ready to um, 
provide some Cocoa VGA register settings uh, in the next video frame. So we take our next interrupt. The ISR understands that that global flag is set. And so um, it will program the combo lock using CSS, AG, and the, the mode bits. And, uh, and then the next frame will be the register settings. And then we know when that's done, because we get another interrupt. And then we just quickly clean up the screen and show the user you know, something else. Like I said, something they want to see. OK, so uh, some, of the, some of the caveats, some of the problems here are kind of related to there are some things, some features missing from the MC10 that the, the Coco 2 has. For example, the MC10 doesn't have a SAM. The SAM is pretty cool um, and a really nice feature of, uh, of the Coco for a number of reasons. The one here that's most interesting is the fact that it can map uh, video memory to any 512 byte aligned region. So it's very easy to, say, construct something that you don't want the user to see but are your Coco VGA setup during the blanking region, point over to that for one video frame, and then point back to the video region that you still had your graphics on, right? You can't do that on the MC10. There's not a way to dynamically remap your memory on the fly. <clears throat> and so, you know, that means that you're, you're kind of in a race during the next, you know, the follow-up blanking region to clean up after yourself, right? So just, just something to, to keep in mind there. Uh, so maybe, well that, maybe it'll make a little more sense if I demonstrate this. Um, so this, this MC10 has been, uh, I've, I've thrown a, I have an MCX32 SD on the back of it, and I've also 3D printed a case that makes, makes it taller so I can actually fit a Coco VGA board in here. Um, it also gives me some places to add some more things like audio jacks, the Coco VGA button board, and a well, power and reset button just for good measure. Who doesn't like those? Let's see. Working better earlier. Okay, stand now. Okay, good. All right. Okay. So you know, so here, you know, I'm using the up and down arrow keys, right? Uh, w and Z is how they're marked to move the. Uh, the orange CSS region up and down, right? So I'm, I'm altering the, uh, the phase, right? We're already in sync, but let's get this phase lock to off screen, hit enter, and then, you know, we've, we've programmed Coco VGA. All right, so we programmed Coco VGA to, to access the uh, 64 column um, text mode, for example. So, um, Anyway, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you should be able to get to the 16 color mode, right? Um, you should be able to upload a, uh, a character set, you know, like uh, Stevie's uh, um, uh, bomb game, right? You could you could do that, right? That makes all those things possible. So um, anyway, um, Infinity mirror. Oh, can't see it. Let's see here. I didn't mean to drop off the sharing. You can do the sharing in Brendan Mister, but you got more slides to try to reshare. Yeah, I only have one slide left, but yeah, sorry about that. I I didn't know I dropped off sharing. I didn't mean to. No, I stopped it so I could see Miss uh, Brandy zooming in on the projector. Gotcha. All right. Sorry about that. That was my bad. It didn't really get infinity effect on it. Yeah. So anyway, if, if you'd like to know more, well, you know, feel free to talk to me, right? I'll be around. Uh, you can drop me an email or whatever. Um, so there, there's the paper that, that Simon and I wrote 
um, link to that. I've also got it at my table. Um, and then, of course, you know, some specs and, and service manuals and stuff like that that were kind of useful for doing this. So anyway, uh, that's all I got, just a quick demo. Thanks. So any, any questions or anything like that? How much is it? How much is it? Uh, I don't know. Coco VGA is 95. Um, I'm mostly sold out. Um, I have a few boards left. I, unfortunately, I have none that will fit the MC10 um, at this point. So, but hopefully that will change. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest and say um, it's, I mean, it's, it's not hard, but it is easier if you have equipment to, to do things like desoldering. So uh, let, me, let me talk about that just real, real briefly, I'll qualify it a little further. So on the MC-10, the 6847 is not socketed, so you, you will want to remove that. Right, so I desoldered that and replaced it with a socket so I could plug a Coco VGA board into it. Additionally, there's a, an RF shield that, that is soldered to the uh, main board that covers um, all of the chips underneath the keyboard. Um, and it obscures part of the 6847, so it's necessary to desolder and remove that as well. So those, those have large lugs uh, soldered to the underside of the board. Um, Beyond that, it's trivial. <laughs> so, so anyway. Um, what you're saying is once you get past the hard part, it's easy. Exactly. That is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, um, and and you can you know I originally did this with standoffs, little plastic um, or little nylon, uh, 18 millimeter standoffs with longer screws. Um, I only did the 3D printed case later, but you know. We have a question about how much. Oh, I don't know. I have some available here at the, the show. I haven't really thought about the price, to be honest. So uh, I think we can, we can work out something ch cheap and trivial. 100 bucks cash? Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, could probably, I think I could probably sell five of them for 100 bucks. So um, <laughs> yeah. So if there's interest, I, I have some, some. Some red and some black. Sure, sure. That's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, great presentation. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Pretty interesting stuff. So I have a question. Is the main purpose behind using the timer to uh, enable the software to know when to communicate with the board? Yes, okay. that is really the key. Because, right, even if the V-Sync coming out of the 6847 isn't actually used or hooked up anywhere, you could always run a wire out to the hardware. Yeah. Solve that problem easier. Maybe even use an unused pin on the cartridge. Uh, right. Spot, right. Right. But the problem is, and the reason why you're using the timer then, is to provide some flag mm -hmm. um, to the on the software side to know when to communicate to the Coco VGA, so that uh, we can tell the difference between actual video data and the command going to the Coco VGA. Hey, that's exactly right. So. You know, you, you asked how hard this was to install. The hardware stuff was easy compared to the software stuff, right? The software stuff took a lot longer. But, you know, it you know, wasn't that hard once, once you put your mind to it. All right, any other questions? I, I just want to say thank you for making the Coco VGA. I love it. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you for making it. Oh, thank you, Stevie. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody.